Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. I'm so glad you're here. I'm gonna be responding. I had a lot of thoughts, and when I have a lot of thoughts, I like to share them with you. So I saw a couple other YouTubers talk about this, and so I'll link helpful videos down in the description for you to know a little bit more. Stephen Furtick's son, Elijah Furtick, I believe is his name, but he is pursuing a rap career, it looks like, and produced an album under the name Do The Dash. I am not a rap fan, okay? I wouldn't have listened to this music anyways, but because other Christians have been talking about the lyrics of these songs, I was like, whoa, okay, this is actually something I feel like I should talk about. I have spoken out against Stephen Furtick in the past and people have gotten kind of uh, fiery with me about that. And so I expect that the same thing is gonna happen with this video. I just want you to come uh, with a mind focused on what does God's word say and how we as Christians should respond to things like this because I am not saying that Stephen Furtick is responsible for his son's choices, but at the same time, I have a lot of scriptures that I want to talk about that his son's choices could very possibly be a result of his own uh, shortcomings and sins in leading his family. So. I don't really want to play the song, but I'll probably just play a little bit so you kind of understand what's going on. But basically, this song references a lot of money, guns, sex, girls, alcohol, basically everything worldly. I'll just pull it up here. I'm gonna have to slow it down because he raps so fast. I got the trip, Richard Milley. I'm only 16, but I'm my cup of Billy. My pants are from Ricky, my bro keep a blicky. I'm oh, yeah, I keep me a baddie like Demi. My neck is frosty like it's windy. Just walked in a party, they sipping on Henny. She calling my phone, but I'm busy. And I just run up like I'm getting dizzy. Like her one time, now she miss me. But I ain't worried about that. This is literally a song I would never, ever, 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 ever listen to. One of the things that I saw other people commenting on, I don't have an Instagram anymore, so it's not like I get to see these things, but Holly Furtick commented on her son's post about this song and just said, so proud of this project. I haven't seen that Stephen Furtick has like publicly endorsed it, although I did see that potentially his son sang or rapped at Elevation. I saw him on stage and it looked like Elevation could be wrong. The reason I want to talk about this is because there are so many things and references in this song. This kid is 16. Okay, he is still a child. He's still living un under his parents' roof as far as I know. He is still underage. And I think about like when I was 16, like I did not know like anything about the world. I was just like super wrapped up in wanting to fit in and wanting to be cool. And that's just basically what high school is, is like a popularity contest and trying to make friends. And once you get past that stage, you realize that you don't really stay friends with a lot of people from high school and that none of that stuff matters. But when you're in it, it means the world. This just seems like a kid that is crying out to be accepted by the world or by his friend group. This does not, to me, seem like a kid who is grounded in anything. And I wonder what is going on at home? What is going on with his parents? What are they teaching him? And so because Stephen Furtick has such a huge platform and he is a pastor of a mega church, the primary focus needs to be on your children and your home life represents how you are going to lead people. And if you can't lead people in your house well, you shouldn't be leading a church. There's so many things I could talk about, about Stephen Furtick and the way he leads his church, but we're not going to do that because he's basically just a celebrity pastor walks in, walks out. He doesn't do any shepherding. As far as I know from people who have gone to Elevation, who have worked for Elevation, who have visited, who has been guest speakers at Elevation, he is not a personal person. He does not talk with you. He has bodyguards to keep him away from his congregation and people. It's very troubling. If he's not personal with his congregation, if he's not shepherding them as a pastor should, then he's probably not doing that at home either. And this is just a side note, but like they have a 
ginormous house, it would be very easy to not spend time with your family when your house is that large. There's a couple of verses I want to talk about. One is Proverbs 22, 6, from what Elijah Furtick is doing in this, in these songs and the things he's talking about and the way he's speaking. This does not seem like Stephen Furtick or Holly Furtick has done a good job in this, but it says, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Are they training him in worldly things? Because that is what is coming out of this music, this project is full, regurgitating worldly things. This is nothing new, this is nothing unique, this is nothing exciting. I've heard literally every other secular rapper has rapped about these things. This is not creative, this is not different, this is the world. There's nothing pure, good, righteous about it. Let me grab my Bible because I don't have it and I need to just like flip through it a few times because there's some verses that we need to talk about about qualifications for elders and pastors which is going to tie back into what his son is doing is kind of a, a reflection of him and his leadership. All right, I'm running, I'm running. All right, we got the goods. The first one I want to bring up is in James. I was reading that this morning, actually. James 3, 1 through 12. Okay, this is, yeah, this is kind of a longer uh, stint of scripture, so hopefully I can break it down well. My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. But no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. The things that his son is speaking in this is so worldly, not godly at all. I don't know if he's saved or claims to be saved, but if he does, then this verse is speaking directly to him because he would probably be in some circles talking about God, praising God, and yet here he is with his homies speaking perverse things, worldly things. You can't have both. The Lord says it's one or the other. And then I wanted to talk about some verses in Titus that talks about qualifications for elders and leaders in the church. At the beginning of that last verse, it's like, teachers are held to a higher standard, higher accountability, okay? So Stephen Furtick has put himself in the leadership of a lot of people. He is going to be held to a very high standard by God, and I don't think he realizes that. Here in Titus chapter 1, we're going to start in verse 5. So this is Paul speaking to Titus. For this reason I left you in Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. If a man is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of dissipation or insubordination. For a bishop he must be blameless, as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. This is pretty, pretty self-explanatory here. The man must be blameless. This is talking to teachers, so this would be talking to Stephen Furtick. The man must be blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful children, not accused of dissipation or insubordination insubordination. And in the end of verse 7, I think this is very telling too for the whole Furtick family and what his kid is just screaming about his wealth, that they are to not be violent and not greedy for money. Now, if Stephen Furtick and his family were not greedy for money, you would see that, right? In a humble lifestyle. Nothing about this song and these lyrics are humble. This is 
I want to show you how much wealth I have, that I have designer clothes, that I have lots of money, that I have ice around my neck. I can have whatever money can offer. And I think later on he says, like, he shows up to the bank and they're like, oh, it's you again. Like, he's just getting more money. He's always getting money. This is boasting in your wealth, in your riches, when we are called to only boast in the Lord Jesus Christ. But does that show in his life, does that show in Stephen Furtick's life that they boast in the Lord? Because if you look at their lifestyle, most of it is boasting in themselves, boasting in their wealth. And his son is clearly boasting about all things worldly. There's some more in chapter two, but I'm not going to get into them for time's sake. We're going to talk about worldly desires, which is basically what that whole song is about. First John 2. 15 through 17. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Do not love the world. That whole song is about loving the world. Every single bit of it is trying to fit in, is trying to be liked by the world, is trying to be relatable to the world. And this verse is saying like, if you focus on these things, all this stuff that the world, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes, that these things are passing away, but he who does the will of God abides forever. This should be a cause for concern for the parents if the parents were grounded in the word and actually cared about their child's salvation and cared about training them up in righteousness and to know the word and to know and love God, if that is their primary concern and if that is their primary goal and their purpose, this would be red flags all over the place. I would sit my child down and I'd be like, this is not how I've taught you. These are not things that glorify and honor God. And this is a house and a family that, that desires to glorify and honor God. And if you don't want to do that, then don't do that. But you don't have my support in this. And yet it seems like it's the opposite. They are supporting him in his worldly ventures. That is just going to harm him so much more because now his parents support him or at least his mom supports him and he's 16 years old. Think of how much more, or how much worse things he could get into now that he's opened the door to that and his mother has basically pushed him in and said, good for you, honey, like continue to pursue the world. It's just very, very sad. And I think that as the scripture teaches members of a pastor's household, if they are acting like this, it is a reflection on the leadership in the home. I just, I don't know. I don't know if he spends a lot of time with his son. I don't know if he has been teaching him to love the Lord. He's disconnected from his congregation. Is he also the same way disconnected from his family? Like, is there any teaching that goes on at home? I don't know. From the fruit, it doesn't appear to be that way. And I think that that is really troubling. And I think as Christians, we should pay attention to that because the Bible talks about it. The Bible clearly shows these are the things that pastors and elders should be. And if that's not happening, they're not in line with scripture. If Elevation has an elder team, this is something that I feel like the elders should call out. They should. They should have a conversation about this and, and maybe they will. I don't know. I'm not going to hold my breath for that because I don't think that that is going to happen, but it could. And I think that Elijah needs a lot of prayer and needs a lot of godly influences in his life. He's clearly going down a path toward worldliness and his mom is just paving the way for him, you know? Like, I think he needs our prayer, to be honest, and, and just the Furtick family in general. I don't know where they're at with their relationship with God and, and how, how much they adhere to scripture. There's just, there's so many red flags in this situation, and I think we as Christians should pay attention to that. We shouldn't just be flippant about it because it is serious. This is something that is affecting the body of Christ and especially believers at Elevation. Seeing their pastor's son speak about these things, like that would be super troubling for me. The pastor's primary job is not his church actually, it's his home life. It is leading his family well. And when he can lead his family well, then and only then is he able to lead a congregation. And actually one of our pastors spoke on this not that long ago, 
because our head pastor had pulled him aside, had said that your wife had come to me and had said that, that things at home are getting kind of rough because you've been spending so much time in the ministry. So he pulled him aside and said, you know what, your purpose and your primary goal is your family. And if that is struggling right now, you have to leave the ministry and go to your family and make that the priority to strengthen that and make that better. And then you can come back to the ministry. And so he had to pull away from some of the ministry things that he had taken on because his family started to suffer. And our pastor saw that and saw the concern and said, this is not good. Ministry is not priority. Family is priority. And then ministry out of the overflow of a right family. I appreciated him sharing that because it shows how important that is. It is so important that the pastor focuses on his family and then he can love others. But first and foremost, it's the family. And I don't see this happening from the fruit that's coming from Elijah and his pursuits right now. That doesn't seem to be the case. So there's a lot that we don't know, but I do think that as Christians, we should be praying about this situation, praying for Elijah not to continue going down that, that path towards more and more darkness, because you rap about these things and it's only going to get worse unless Jesus really opens his eyes, captures his heart, renews his mind, and he can turn from those things. But it's kind of an open rebuke. It's also a response. Leave your responses in the comments. And then, like I said, I'll leave other videos in the description for you guys to check out because there was other people that had, to be honest, probably better articulated thoughts than me. And I think that this conversation can really benefit us to know scripture more and to learn from what we are seeing in the limelight of these people are high up in, in celebrity Christianity. And so a lot of eyes are on them. And I think that we can use that as an opportunity to bring it back to the word and say that this isn't, don't look at them to be an example, look to the word, that they are living contrary to it in some ways, and this is how. And so always come back to the word. I hope you guys liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that support. I also have more response videos that I'll leave a link for a playlist for more of them if you enjoy these types of videos and that's all I've got for you today. So I will see you in my next video.